Democrat of Massachusetts. She serves on the Chamber's Banking and Finance Committees and chairs the Economic Policy Subcommittee, and she joins me now. Senator, good evening to you. This is the last report um, before the Fed is going to meet uh, on interest rates. How might Chair Powell be looking at this? Oh, well, look, what he should be observing is both that inflation is headed in the right direction, which is down, but also that it's time to lower interest rates because the problems we have on pricing right now are not problems from some kind of overheated economy. Mm -hmm. What we really have is a problem with a lot of price gouging from giant corporations. And there's nothing about Fed interest rates that's going to change that. We also know that the Fed inflation number reflects about a third of it is for housing costs. And part of the problem we have right now is that when interest rates are high, that drives up the cost of housing, both uh, you don't get new starts for apartments and more investment in it. And also homeowners, uh, the costs have gone up for them. So it's time to start bringing those interest rates down. Uh, we're headed in the right direction, and we don't need them nearly as high as they are. Senator, when I talk to voters, I hear two things. I hear about housing, which you just referenced, and I hear about food. Food at home index declined. 0.2%. You've called on the president to use executive authority to lower food prices. Explain to me how that would work. So understand, look, this is President Biden's, one of his central issues is to work on bringing down costs for families. And he's been very successful at doing that on junk fees. Uh, you know, everything from buying airline tickets to uh, uh, concert tickets to uh, junk fees on check overdrafts and credit card fees. He's pushing down costs for families. The other thing he's done is he's been bringing down costs on health care. Uh, we all know about $35 insulin and the fact that seniors now spend no more than $2,000 maximum across a year on their prescription drugs. He's bringing down the cost of other prescription drugs for everyone. So that's a big one. He's canceled student loan debt for four and a half million people. That helps bring down costs. He also has been focusing on grocery prices and has been bringing his administration to bear on this. And it's particularly here where what we see is a lot of concentration in the industry. We see basically four major grocery chains who just kind of own the world out there in the grocery space. And you back it up the supply chain. So it's just a couple that are doing uh, meat processing, chicken processing. Uh, and it even goes further back. Farmers are getting squeezed because there's so much concentration they can only buy seeds from one or two suppliers. And the consequence of that kind of concentration up and down the line is that at every point where there's not real market concentration, it means that the company can say, not only are we going to pass along costs when they go up, we're going to lard on extra, extra, extra profits. So what we've seen, for example, in, um, uh, in profiteering by these giant companies is that profits increased by 75%. That's not inflation. That's profits going up because these companies have figured out that when everyone's talking about inflation, that's the time to raise prices. And by the way, don't take my word for it. Take the word of the CEOs themselves who get on these quarterly calls with their investors and basically say inflation has been good to them because it's let them raise prices way above costs. And that's a problem. We want to see the president use more tools to attack it. Well, let's talk about those tools because there's actually some big news on Capitol Hill today. The FAA reauthorization.